Hi everybody, this is Shah Rukh Khan and please do download the Bollywood Times app right now. History has given us the finest stories of all mankind. Then Shah Rukh Khan was born and history was rewritten. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the lion-hearted, the renaissance man and the man who really hates being called battery. So, welcome to Bollywood Times. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to have you. Thank you for having me. The first me on time Bollywood on Times. video. Thank you. Let's talk about this whole battery thing, right? I mean, when I was growing up, I was in college, uh, sir. I stitched the creaseless pants from Mohabbate. Mm -hmm. I clearly remember. And I was fascinated by wearing those type of clothes what Shah Rukh Khan wore in Mohabbate, right? But while you were growing up, did you look up to any actor and wanted to dress like him, whether it was spectacles, uh, trousers, shirts? I think the, the actors that really affected us, uh, of course, was Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. So I, I would do his hair. I thought my hairstyle was like his. But of course, the height was half, so one could not pass away as Mr. <laughs> Bachchan. And uh, then Mr. Rishi Kapoor, I remember, in Bobby. And uh, I didn't make the clothes, but my mother got me this chenille uh, safari. You know, it used to, safaris he had made it very popular in that. So I remember I used to wear them, and I felt really sad when it tore, and you were not very well off. So it wasn't that I could get another one, yeah. So the red chenille safari was there. I think, yeah, I would, I would be uh, a big uh, lover, admirer, and a fan of uh, Mr. Bachchan and Mr. Rishi Kapoor, yeah. So you've played, uh, you know, characters early on in your career, which had grey shades, Dar, Bazigar, even Anjam, uh, Dawn recently. Does it feel liberating sometimes to play grey shades because then you can vent out the frustration? Yeah, maybe a bit of that uh, to all of us. I think that's why we also start uh, like watching gangster films, whether it's a mafia, Godfather, Narcos, or uh, you know even Company, and you know some of those films, well-made gangster films, or about the underworld, or about a person who's a um, grey in character, or the world which is a little grey. I think we all get enticed by it. We all get attracted to it. But as an actor, I think uh, another aspect of uh, playing a bad guy is, you know, I mean, with due respect, I've played a lot of good guys and above board guys, but uh, they're more sedate, they're more controlled. Uh, there are only four or five parameters which good people follow. They're honest, they're truthful, they're upright, they're nice, they're patient, they're wonderful, and stand on the side of the truth. But with a gray shade, you can go, I think, uh, as an actor, you can go to some extremes, uh, even even in crutches like the laughter or the way the eyes look, from the clothes to the hair, uh, to the intonation in the voice, to doing things which perhaps uh, may seem unjustified also or weird, but you can get away with it. So, you know, like, like a joker from Batman is very attractive. Uh, and he could be doing really over-the-top weird things, but you get attracted to it because he's a psychopath. You can give it an excuse. So, yeah, it, it, is, it is attractive uh, for any actor, I think, to me more so. I find uh, the baser elements of mankind quite interesting to uh, find out about because that's the life we don't lead. You know, our lives are mostly above board and happy-go-lucky and all rosy. Uh, so suddenly you see these reasons uh, like a Gabbar Singh in Shole. You know, many times I wondered if the movie was made from the point of Gabbar Singh, uh, maybe you would like him better and not uh, J and you. <laughs> so it, it's a point of view that you take. The point of view that people really attracted to uh, Raiz is that lovely surma that you've applied under your eyes. And whose who's intake was that? I mean, whose input, sorry? I, I don't know. I think uh, we, we had a designer, Sheetal, who's designed the whole look. And of course, uh, Rahul himself. So they had this whole... The, the, the film spans uh, a life uh, from 7, eight, 80 years old to about 40, 45, I think. And um, so there's a whole graph to how I would look when I'm younger. The hair is a little different. The clothes are bell bottoms and uh, white colored shirts. And then at one time he starts wearing the Pathanis, uh, which people in that area, which we were kind of trying to show, um, wear. And, and the glasses change with it. And one of the things uh, I think uh, somebody suggested was if you wear a little kajal or surma or whatever. And I've seen some people wear it. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'd never worn it before in my life. And uh, I thought it looked a little different. Uh, and, and the camera person, Mohan, said, you look very scary. But I think everybody agreed with it that this is a look that will fit in. So we just went ahead with it. So really Rahul and Sheetal and all the... Scary to sexy, I think that's what people now say. I, I don't know how <laughs> sexy. I look at myself, I still find myself like a girl. <laughs> okay, now time to surprise Shah Rukh Khan with his first gift. So we've got a surprise for you. You're going to unwrap this. This is for you. Now oh, that wow. you're talking about grey shades, I'm sure you'll love it. Well, this is very sweet, yeah. Call me more often to your show. 
Oh, superb. Oh, really wonderful. Thank you so much. He's one of my favorite actors, actually. Yeah, and I just researched that Scarface is your uh, one of your favorite films as well. Yeah, I think it's an amazing film. Yeah, and even Center of a Woman. I yeah, think in yeah. both films. I mean, he's a brilliant actor, of course, goes without saying. But yeah, Scarface was very interesting, very, very interesting. As a matter of fact, I think I, I, I don't know if Ray's falls in that zone or not. But the world that, uh, an Indian part of the world. So yeah, uh, it's it's in a world like that. Uh, and maybe even the viciousness or not not to the extent of uh, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, the viciousness is like that, yeah. You know, I read somewhere that you said that Ray's was so realistic and so gripping and hard hitting that you had to tone the film down a bit. A, I want to ask you uh, why tone it down when you know you thought it was so realistic and hard hitting, and B, you think it was because of the censorship? Not because of the censorship. I think we, you know, what uh, what we were trying to do is to actually, you know, Rahul himself is a very realistic filmmaker, and as soon as he decided to cast me in that realistic film. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, Ritesh, Farhan, Rahul had decided to commercialize the film a little more. Mm. It's not just, you know, because a, a realistic film sometimes ends up being very niche. Mm. Uh, when you take a big movie star who'd love to do this act, but somewhere the costs increase, the whole, um, you know, the mounting of the film does increase, whether you like it or not. Right. So you need to make it a commercially viable film. Uh, so somewhere down the line, his, his ideology was that too, that I would like to make a commercial realistic film. Uh, when you start doing that, sometimes you may have to sacrifice uh, a bit of realism, which could be too hard hitting, uh, could be inciting actually in today's time and age. You know, certain things we say, uh, and you know, people are, uh, I mean, I'm, I won't say touchy, people are sensitive. And I think a commercial film should somehow look at all sensitivities, respect everyone. When you're making a niche film, perhaps you can get away with saying hard hitting stuff or language or, you know, you, you have bad language in niche films and this, you can't do it. Mm. So you tone it down a bit, you know, you feel like saying it. I personally have never used bad language in a film, but in a character like this, I would if it was a niche film. So you tone that down a bit, take it out a bit. Some of the incidents that we had done according to the time period, uh, mid 80s to mid 90s, which had happened in India, we just felt we should not kind of name them, bring them back to four because it can just invoke sensitivities, which we didn't want to really, you know, uh, get into. And, and with due respect, we have enough sensitivities in the film as to try and get any more. And let me tell you, I just uh, saw the song Odi Odi Jai. Fabulous. Yeah, I'm glad people like it because uh, actually the latter half of the song is in Gujarati actually. This I lead, yeah. this is very, thank you very much, you guys are very kind. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, please call me more often. You give food and lovely coffee and books to read. Yeah. This and is, actually, uh, the whole day. a few more surprises for you again in store. Let me just take out one uh, which is very personalized, sir. Something for you. This is even bigger. As larger than life as you are. Thank you. Done this. That is done uh, by Prasad Bhatt, an international artist from based in Bangalore. Oh, lovely. And, this yeah, is that's a caricature of yours. Yeah, very nice. And somebody had actually, may I keep it here? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, somebody had actually sent me this picture on the Twitter and said this is one of the nicest uh, poses of the film. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it is. This is really cool. It? Thank you. I remember meeting you in Mannat and we had a long, long 45 minutes to one hour session in your library. And when I had asked you a question, I would repeat that question again because it gives me goosebumps the way you answer it. Is so you've got it all after this enormous struggle, you know, personal life losses that you faced, and and where you are today, right? Uh, do you fear losing it all one day? Do you fear that you know, when I when I go on my birthday on the you know um, on top of the fence, and I see very little fans, do you fear? It's, it's not a uh, a recurring thought, or it's not something that keeps me awake at night. I have a couple of things to say about it now. It's been 25 years I've been doing this. One is that uh, I, I do understand that just like I was a failure before I, uh, you know, I had nothing in life. I had nothing to lose, nothing to gain. I came here 25 years ago and then everything just turned out to be really wonderful. And I've become who I've become. So that 25 years of my life, perhaps, all the losses I had, was a transient phase. I cannot take this 25 years for granted either. This might be a transient phase too. It's been wonderful, you know. Uh, I've had 25 years of sadnesses and uh, well, lovely times also with my parents. And then 25 years of this amazing uh, uh, professional and personal game. Maybe it'll go away. 
But having said that, I, I never think about it really. I never really sit down and uh, like a lot of people tell me, oh, you don't have any private life. The other day I was sitting with someone and somebody said, God, I'd never like to have Shah Rukh Khan's life. <laughs> he can't go out, he can't go onto the road, he can't do this, but I worked for this. And I really enjoy it. Yes, and having said that, though I don't think about it, yeah. If, if there are no people uh, uh, shouting at my name or if I go to a restaurant and I can peacefully sit down and have food, yeah, I'll feel very lonely, I think. I'm, 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 I, I would like to believe this is a part and parcel of my life. I, I'm used to this extended family that I have. That's why I try and meet as many people as I can with love and warmth. And if they're not going to be there, I'm going to miss them like I miss my parents. Uh, but I also believe if I keep working hard, um, I may be able to pull it off for a long time till I get really tired. And maybe then I would like to go to a restaurant, have a cup of coffee alone without anyone recognizing me. But I don't know. But I, I would not like that to happen, no, honestly. So you've worked with debutants in your career. You've worked with, you know, uh, right from Mr. Bachchan to, to, you know, Anushka Sharma made a debut opposite you. The struggle of Nawazuddin Siddiqui as an actor, we all know what he's gone through today. You know, the recognition and the talent that he has, uh, has spanned over 15 years. Do you, with so many years of experience, even intake a little bit from a unique talent like Nawaz? Absolutely, yeah. I think, uh, you know, you reach a section in your career where even Nawaz Bhai will tell you, or all actors who want to imbibe things. You know, acting is very strange. The more you do it, the more you realize how little you know it. And I keep saying it, you know, people on social media, because they don't have a great sense of humor, they <laughs> put it as a joke that, oh yeah, you need to know more acting, you don't know acting. It's not true. The more I'm doing it, the more I realize that uh, how little I know of acting. You know, when I started off, I thought I know it all. And I could be as good as uh, Mr. Bachchan. But as you do stuff, you realize how little I know, the nuances, the depth. And you reach a stage as an actor where there's not much to learn from yourself or on your own. You sit with actors and actresses, and I've been very fortunate. I'd, I'd name from Sri Devi Ji to Alia, in between so many wonderful actors and actresses. Um, Bachchan Sahib, of course, Rishi Kapoor, there were so many of them. Om Puri Ji and um, Nasir Bhai, and not only the known ones, like Zeeshan in my film, and uh, Nawaz Bhai. So you reach a stage where all you want to do is you sit across another actor and just say, okay, let me just feed off him or her. Mm. And in this film, I fed off a lot. Shamelessly so, <laughs> happily so, and fortunately so. Uh, I think, you know, I, I say it many times, you know, the other day I was saying, I was in a film with Alia and I'm, I learned a lot from her and people think I'm being modest and patronizing. No, genuinely, you feed off, th th that's what I think acting finally comes to be, that you feed off uh, good actors, actually even bad actors. You just feed off and allow it to seep into you and try and do scenes like that because the craft is already there after 25 years, you know how to look, how to sit, how to remember your dialogues. The art only comes if you're able to reproduce it from a new experience like Nawazuddin. So he's been a, I, I think, you know, I, I read an interview where he said, if you like my character, it will be a lot because of Shah Bhai. I would just put it back across to him, mm -hmm. that if you like me, we spend a lot of time in the film together, it would be because of Nawaz Bhai. So does personal, a couple of last questions. Uh, does personally acting affect you like Abram, you know, a ray of sunshine in your life now, the cutie pie, I mean, we saw him, my God, he's so infectious, man, his vibe is amazing. Do you feel that, hey, you know what, him coming in my life, in our life, uh, my acting has changed, my acting has improved, I, I, I don't know, I've, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? Respect what you're saying, I figure it out. I, I think uh, two things happen. For me, I've always been a big fan of children. I always tell people, I don't like the company of adults. I like children, then I like women, and <laughs> men come last. Uh, I'm, I'm, because I find the gentleness, the softness, uh, from the skin to the hair to the eyes to just the way they speak, uh, extremely attractive. And uh, children are the most uninhibited, uh, expressors of things. So even when they get angry or shout or beat you up or cry out or misbehave, it's just so amazingly raw. And I realize as I grow older that I want to act like a child. You know, when Picasso was finishing off in the last phase of his life, his ideology was that, can I paint like a child? I want to act like a child. As a matter of fact, most of my acting, my, mo most of my acting has been inspired by children around me, my own, others, and I see children. And now with Abraham coming in, I find myself in a newer phase of learning acting. He's also got some purity of expression till such time that we destroy it uh, <laughs> in the world. So yeah, it's, it's a, that, that, that part obviously is there, that I'm learning something new from Abraham. Personally, I think you become gentler. 
uh, as a human being. Uh, you know, children make you gentler. And as an actor, I think that's a good quality. A lot of actors tell me, you know, when I'm meeting them, I don't correct them, but they say, you know, you've got to be, you, you have to have gusto, you have to be outgoing, you have to be there, you have to... I find it very wrong when actors finish a shot and say, I killed it, man. <laughs> no, you don't kill a scene. You make it alive. So I think that gentleness has permeated into me through my children. And hopefully, you know, some of the performances, I think fan is. I remember Manish Sharma would not shoot with me if Abram wasn't on the set. He would say, till your son is here, if you don't act like Abram as Gaurav, uh, I don't want you to come on the sets. And I, I mean, of course, I'm not acting like Abram. Gaurav was very different. But there is an inspiration from the expression, the rawness, the naturalness of my children that I kind of try to bring. Uh, I don't know if I manage it or not. So on that note, let's kill it in this interview as well. Sorry, wrong phase, but let's play. <laughs> Never have I ever, I'm sure you've played this game. So what is it? I have and... Well, you, if you've done something, I have. If you haven't, okay. no, I haven't. Okay. Never have I ever been mistaken for a doppelganger. For a? For a doppelganger. Uh, so never have I? Ever so been if mistaken. If I have been, what do I say? I have. I have, okay. Oh, you have been? Yeah, but a lot of people come to me and they say, me, you Shah Rukh Khan. Lagte <laughs> so I said, yes, I've heard a lot of people. Okay. Never have I ever told Karan Johar, you can't let Dharma Productions go to Andheri, man. So I have to say that... If you have said this to Karan, you say, I have. No, no, I've not said it. <laughs> no. You being a Bandra boy, he being a, you know, Bandra boy. But his office is beautiful. In the yeah, movie. it is. Yeah, it's much it? nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never have I ever lied to Aryan, Suhana and Abram. I, I have. You have to lie to children. I'm an actor. I lie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A couple of last ones. Never have I ever re-gifted a gift that was given to me. No. I never give my gift to anyone. Thank never. God. These two are safe. Then. Yeah, yeah, they'll never go anywhere. <laughs> okay. And never have I ever forgotten Gauri Khan's birthday. No, no, never. Never. You've performed well, sir. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to give something. It. You've killed it. And I'm going to give something for Abram. Please, thank you. this yeah, is this for is very him. kind. This is really sweet. So many gifts. And the coffee was wonderful. Thank you so much. And the dhokla is even better. And I've had a good evening. Oh, wow, thank you. I'm going to take it to him right now and tell him I just got him another toy. This one I'm, I'm re-gifting. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, thank Fair you. Fair enough. Please, please, sir. Uh, thank you so Thanks much lot, for gracing Bollywood kind. Times. No, thank you very much. much and all the best to Bollywood Times and to you and to everyone. And thank you, good sir. Life. Thank you for having me. God bless. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Shah Rukh Khan and you're watching Bollywood Times with Devansh Patel. Patel.